Hey y'all. Um, I have a few things to say. First of all, this applies to the whole rest of what I'm about to say. Everything I'm talking about does not apply to the male species in general, of course, because I know there's a whole internet thing, men versus women. I'm not really all into that, um, but some of the things in my experience, and I can only speak to my experience, I can't speak about uh, experiences with women because while I am a woman, I don't try to date women, so I don't know the dating habits of other women. So before you try to come at me like, well, women do this and that, okay, that's not why I'm here. The first story is about a, I think, 25, 26 year old gentleman who I met recently. And he's funny, he was fine and everything, and you know, nice personality, all that. Got his number, or he got my number, we're texting and all that. And he asked me a question that I feel like, as a 26 year old man, you should not be asking because we're too old, we not in high school no more. This man gonna ask me if I'm a virgin. I'm 22 years old, about to be 23, you're 26. There's no reason we should be having a conversation like that. Story number two, last night was my last day at the coffee shop, Lily Bean. Well, he, I don't know if he was older. He looked older, but at the same time, he acted kind of younger than I thought he was. But anywho, he came in, and, you know, try to talk with me, flirt with me and everything, which, I mean, I wasn't attracted to him at all. But I mean, that's normal for the coffee shop. Sometimes that happens, right? So he comes in, trying to flirt with me and everything, asked me if I still have a boyfriend. I don't, but I told him I do because I'm not, I ain't even want to go down that road. So we're talking everything. He trying to get to know me while standing there at the coffee shop drinking his drink. And he asked me, you know, do you feel safe working here by yourself? Because, you know, at the coffee shop, there's only one person on each shift. And I was like, yeah, I feel pretty safe. The police right there on the other side of the road. Um, the location of the shop is in a safe neighborhood that I live in. So, I mean, yeah, I feel pretty safe. There's two exits, one in the front, one in the back. And he was like, yeah, but I mean, the police, they ain't gonna respond that fast. I mean, in five minutes, some, whoever try to come in here and do, they gonna do what they already gonna do. I'm like, okay. And he was like, you already know they're gonna tie you up and stuff. That was just so disgusting to me. You don't even know me, sir. And you already visualizing me getting tied up by an intruder. What's wrong with y'all? Story number three. There's this guy and he might watch this and that's fine. No hard feelings. Like, honestly, no hard feelings. Met him in high school, but we, I saw him again recently. Just a preface to this story. I don't have a problem hitting up a guy first. Like that's never an issue for me. Like if I'm interested in somebody, I will hit them up if I feel the confidence to do so. So I hit him up on Instagram, right? You know, just to fill things out. And you know, he was feeling it at first. You know, if you ever do wanna hang out outside of the place where we met initially, you know, I like to go out and do things. And I said that not to say, come spend money on me, come buy me stuff. I didn't say that. That's not what I meant. And I feel like that's how he took it. But like I said, no hard feelings. I said that because I am not the type of girl to link at your house on the first day, on the first hangout, on the first link. I'm not coming to your house. You're not coming to my house. We're meeting in a public place in the middle of the day. And that's how it's gonna go. And I didn't say all that. I just said, you know, I'm the, I like to go out and do stuff. Nothing extravagant, but I like to go out and do stuff. And I have not gotten a response to this day. I feel like I dodged a bullet. 
not to say he's not a nice guy and all that stuff, but I feel like when you put yourself out there and when you say what you want and you don't get a response or you, you get the, you get a negative response, I'm not ignoring no more red flags. <laughs> like I'm past that. Me and my friend and I was just talking about the other day. We used to ignore all them red flags. I'm not doing that no more. I feel like I dodged a bullet. I feel like, okay, he ain't waste my time. And I appreciate that. Like, I do. Like, I'm not going to be nasty to you. Like, it is what it is. You ain't got to be scared to talk to me no more. It is what it is. So, I just wanted to preface my opinions with those stories. Because those are just recent experiences over the last, like, over the last week or two. But just in general, I am at a time in my life where I am just not as interested in dating as I used to be. I used to really want to go out with guys and date and do all that fun stuff but like now I'm completely just like I'm over it and not just because of those few experiences but I mean those are kind of the tipping point to be honest but like I am not pressed about dating like I'm not. I'm not pressed about it because I'm not finding what I want and the guys that I have had experiences with are not stepping up to the plate of expectations that I have, even just casually dating. And I feel like my expectations don't be that high. Like, I really feel like they don't. But to each their own. And just to name some of those expectations, for anybody that's curious, you know, like I said, I like to go out in public during the day and do fun stuff. It doesn't have to involve drinking. It doesn't have to involve any drugs. Just a nice time to get to know somebody. Not trying to rush into anything. Not trying to be all physical and stuff at first. Just chill out. And get to know a person. Because I enjoy that part of dating. I enjoy getting to know people. I enjoy finding out more about people. And just finding out about them on a deeper level when the time is right. And that's not everybody's interest in dating. And that's not my business. It really ain't. So that's fine. I also don't really find an interest in someone that doesn't really know how to plan a date. Like, I'm not about to plan a date. I'm a lady. I just feel like, I mean, at first, I feel like as a guy, if you're interested in me, you need to figure something out. Now, if I ask you out, and I have done this before, like, I have no problems planning a date if it was my idea. And I don't even pay for it. Like, if I ask somebody to go hang out, I have no problems paying for it. Like, it's this whole debate on Twitter and on Instagram and this and that about who should pay for what, what the expectations are for men versus women. I don't got time for all that. If I want to pay, I'll pay. And you ain't got to pressure me into it. Because I have paid for dates in the past out of the kindness of my heart and because I really enjoyed that person's company. Just do what works for you. Another thing, I am a face-to-face -face type of person, okay? If you slide, and it ain't nothing wrong with sliding in my DMs on Instagram, it really ain't nothing wrong with it. But if you have no intentions of moving it off the internet in a way that I find comfortable, just don't, just, just say what you gotta say and move on. Okay, I'm not, the best, I'm not about to be texting you on my DM for a month. I love conversation, I do, but I'm not about to do that. I'm trying to move off social media anyway, so that's just, that's what that is. To everyone that disagrees or sees things differently, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with dating how you want to date. The problem is people not dating the people that agree with their dating standards that's where the issue comes in and i'm not interested in dating anybody that doesn't agree with my dating standards that's a waste of time and a waste of energy and i'm not about to be sitting over here crying over somebody that don't want to take me out and like i said i have no problems initiating things because like i said before to all my instagram followers i'm not really scared of rejection the worst that they could say is they're not interested you know how many other people are on Instagram? You know how many people are in the world and y'all be crying over that one? 
I'm a go-getter. And I haven't always been like that, to be honest. Like, I haven't. But life be too short. Life be too short to be wishing somebody talked to you instead of you just initiating things, you know? So that's why I do that because I'd rather know that I did it. Even if I met rejection, I'd rather know that I had the confidence to do something that I wanted to do instead of always wishing. I wonder what that could have been. Because sometimes things work out. Sometimes things work out, even when you least expect it, you know, so don't be scared. Like the worst they could say is they're not interested. I mean, they could be nasty and stuff like that, but then you clap back. And that might have come from my work on myself that I have been doing over the past seven months. I have been working on myself a lot. I have been working on my patience. I have been working on my self-confidence. And maybe that's where that comes from, you know? So if that's what you need to do before you get back out there, then that's what you need to do before you get back out there to avoid getting your feelings hurt every day. I don't know. I don't know. But it's what I did. I have been working on my patience with myself and with other people and with the whole process of finding someone to talk to and someone to hang out with because honestly where i live the pickings are slim to none and i have just accepted that the fuck it book that i read fuck it the ultimate spiritual way it highlighted some very important points one of them being to stop searching but it basically said the more you want something, the more you look for a specific thing, the more you put pressure on yourself to obtain that thing, the farther away it gets. <laughs> like, and that is so, is so true. You really have to ultimately say, my life, while it may be in your control, your life knows when you want too much. And I have seen the result of that just over the past since I read that book maybe past month or two, I said, I said fuck it to searching. I've stopped putting pressure on myself to find someone to hang out with. I've stopped, you know, I don't know if this is just me, but I used to go out, whether that's to the store, whether that's to the gym, and just be on high alert for, you know, I mean, we all do it, cute guy, stuff like that. and. I had to stop myself and say stop searching every time i caught myself looking for something outside of myself for some excitement or happiness or something like that i tell myself stop searching and it works it has worked for me i have taught myself to just enjoy the present moment however that is so if i'm at the gym and i find myself looking around trying to scope out you know i tell myself stop searching and i focus on why i'm really there I'm really there for me, my physical health, and my mental health. And it feels good to be able to let that go because you can't imagine how much pressure that actually is when you, unless you stop, stop it in its tracks. And it has worked for me. So, you know, if you find yourself, like I said, at the grocery store, at the gym, um, at a social event, whatever it is, Tell yourself to stop searching because life, when you put pressure on your life, it doesn't give you what you want. So those are just my opinions on dating in general. Not to say that I'm not interested in dating necessarily, but I am not searching for anything. I'm going to let everything happen the way it's supposed to happen. I'm going to let everything come to me because me trying to meet people where they at it ain't been working <laughs> it ain't been working the way I wanted to work so I'm okay with sitting back I'm okay with letting things happen now I'm okay with being alone sometimes because that was hard not too long ago it was hard to sit here in my house by myself and be okay with my own company and that was probably because of the things I was going through leaving the crisis line still trying to recuperate from that trying to get my mental health back on track but I'm there now, you know, I've, I'm so much better and my own company isn't as depressing as it was. So I'm okay with solitude. And while I want to meet more people, while I want to get out more, I'm not going to force it 
because that's when you start doing things you don't really want to do. That's when you start getting into situations that you don't want to be in. Because then you end up having to ghost people, you end up getting ghosted. All that terrible toxic stuff that comes with relationships is what happens when you force things. It's what happens when you start searching for stuff. It's what happens when you let people in that you know that ain't going to be good for you, but you don't want to be lonely. It's okay to be by yourself sometimes. It is. I promise. You're not going to die. You just have to be strong mentally. You do have to have some mental stability. You have to have some mental strength. And you have to have those self-coping mechanisms. You have to have those to be able to do that successfully. But all that work it took to get here is worth it. Because now I'm not going outside of myself to find excitement, to find company, to find pleasure, all that stuff. Once you're on the other side of that little funk that you think you're in, you'll realize that all the work you need to do is going to be worth it. Every time. Just a little life update. Um, I, like I said, my last day at the coffee shop was on Friday. Um, so I got another work from home job. Nothing like the crisis line. Um, I'll be a virtual receptionist, so I'll be answering calls and doing basic clerical work. I am really excited for it. I start on Monday. I'm excited to work from home again. Like that's where I feel the most productive, honestly. Like I feel the most productive at home where I can sit in my little office area back there and wear what I wanna wear and you know, do what I wanna do in between calls, on breaks, stuff like that. So I'm really excited for it. And the neat part about this job is that you can work anywhere from 25 to 40 hours a week. So it could be a part-time job or it could be a full-time job, just depending on your schedule and how you want to do it. Starting, they pay 15 an hour. Everything's virtual, so, you know, if it's something you're interested in, uh, click the link. But it is um, going to be really exciting, I think. So I'm trying to get off my phone. I'm trying to peel my eyes away from my phone. So... I have been trying to read more and I have been reading more and I actually have a couple of book suggestions. The first one is Fuck It, The Ultimate Spiritual Way that I mentioned earlier. Uh, this book is 230 pages. It's, this is a self-help book technically even though it, he says it's not but it is a very easy read. He doesn't try to use any big language, any spiritual mumbo jumbo he's very straightforward and he even includes a lot of personal experiences that helped him to come up with this way of life and it is i can't tell y'all how much just reading this one book has helped me over the past couple months since i finished it and i even gave it to a friend she said it was very helpful too so i really i do recommend this book y'all should read it i can't i can't really explain the whole spiritual way, the whole spiritual journey that he describes, but it is worth the read. Another one was um, Somebody's Daughter, recommended to me by Jaya Jackson, longtime friend. Thank you, Jaya. This book is a memoir by the author Ashley C. Ford. This book is about her life. It is 210 pages long very short read i think i finished this book in like two days um and it's basically a story about a black girl growing up in the midwest and the way jayas sort of got me to read the book was saying if you're a black girl you should read it and she couldn't be more right like this book really showed that the black girl experience in some parts is universal I felt very close to her. I felt very close to her experience because what I thought was a personal experience for me, not because I was a black girl, you know, was in fact because I was a black girl. And, you know, some very, some very good things came from this book. I realized so many things about myself even from this book. And I think everybody should read it, especially my black girls out there. So, and thank you, Jaya. Thank you, Jaya. And the last one that I have read is called Goodbye Sweet Girl by Kelly Sunberg. And this story 
is about um, a survivor of domestic violence. Now, I didn't relate to the book at all, but it was very eye-opening because I think we all know someone in a type of situation like that or have heard about types of situations like that, of course. But this book basically goes through the cycle of domestic violence. So the abuser doing the abusing, um, apologizing, things are okay for a little bit, and then it starts all over again. And that's how the cycle goes. And I recommend this book because I feel like people in that situation don't realize that they are in the cycle. And I know some people who don't realize they are in the cycle. And reading this book can sort of foreshadow their own future because she got out. She got out by her own will. And a lot of people, a lot of women don't. And not to say that men don't experience domestic violence, but this book was specific to a woman's experience. So I do say that for that reason. It's, it's 254 pages long. It's not long at all. Um, it has some dull parts only because of her environment that she was in. She was in Iowa. So like the surroundings and, you know, things that people do for fun, it wasn't the same as in the South or on the West Coast. So like the environment itself caused the book to have some low points just in terms of interest and excitement but the overall story was very interesting and it was very nice to see or nice to read i should say that's all i have for today i have been dying to make this video just because i've had all that stuff just kind of sitting in my brain and i've been wanting to say it out loud to someone so thank you for watching i guess i'll see y'all on instagram